All right. So, um, the journal prompt that I wanted you guys to look at today is what are you controlling? Okay. At this point, like this moment, this day in your life, what do you feel like you're really trying to control? So it could be future situations, um, it could be yourself or other people, relationships, maybe outcomes, maybe trying to control the past. Okay, so we'll just take about five or so minutes to sit with that prompt and as usual, just keep writing whenever you hit a wall. Okay. So I'll bring you out of this in just a few moments, but this is your time to just sit in with what am I trying to control? last minute or so of journaling if there's anything you want to explore further you can just start to write or jot down some ideas otherwise you can just start to wrap these next couple of sentences up uh, to be revisited at the end of practice glad that was a bark during journaling and not Ian. <laughs> okay, so whenever you're ready, you can start to put your journal aside and just grab any props that you'll like for your practice. I always suggest pillows or blankets. Something softer is always nicer. And we're going to simply start on our backs in Shavasana or whatever variation of Shavasana works for you today. So you can have your legs extended or you can bend your knees and just plant your feet. But essentially just coming to this place of grounding. No rush to get there. If you're still writing, just take your time. So tonight's practice is all about being unwound. That it's in the undoing of all of the things that we've piled on ourselves, all of the places we try to control, that we actually find freedom to just simply be. 
And so as you settle into your body, can you give yourself permission to let go? So physically let go of tension. And start with the bottoms of your feet and ankles and each time that you visit a different muscle group as you move up the body just softening and relaxing into that space Start to bring attention to your calves or maybe you're up towards the hamstrings and quads, the upper thighs. Just finding a little softness around the knee, maybe even the hip joint. Allow your breath to move all the way down towards your belly and so you find this expansion and then softening, just allowing the muscles of the fronts of your hip and your core to be really fluid. Finding that surrender to just these waves of the breath rather than trying to control the breath. Just allowing it to flow all the way to fullness and emptiness. Not afraid to stick out your belly and allow yourself to expand. And you'll move up the length of your spine, just softening any areas of tension or tightness. Especially if there's a heaviness or gripping of the heart, the front of the chest. You might focus on just expanding the breath into that area and allowing your sternum to rise and fall with each breath. You can travel down the arms, softening into your muscles as you move towards your hands. And even just allowing your fingertips to just gently curl in. Relaxing into each space of your body. And then finally bringing your attention to the front of your throat and the muscles of your face. Face is a challenging one sometimes to soften. So I like to think of either two things and whichever works for you, to completely erase your face of any emotion. So just letting maybe the corners of your lip flatten out, your eyelids to drop heavy. Or sometimes I almost like to feel like your face is just melting off to the sides. And so instead of being scrunched up in the middle, that it's just like ironed out, almost like you could just drip away. So in the yin practice, we find surrender through the physical body, which is the doorway to surrendering through the mind and the heart. And in one of the most famous yogic texts, the Yoga Sutras, Apahigraha, or surrendering, is one of the tenets of living a yogic lifestyle. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill all the way up and completely let go and just drop your body into your mat. Let's do that two more times. So 
So inhale to expand, maybe lift slightly. And then exhale, release all effort and just sink in. One more big breath together. Inhale through your nose, fill all the way up. And exhale through your mouth, release. Do you feel that softening, the invitation to come undone? Gently, you can start to wiggle into your fingertips and toes. You might even start to rock your head side to side a couple of times. Eventually, you'll start to straighten out your legs if your knees were bent and bring your arms overhead. And let's just take a nice, good evening stretch to start to bring some awareness into your body. Welcome, maybe a little bit of a bigger movement. But same idea on the exhale, I just want you to drop and relax. So the inhale where you lengthen and then stretch and exhale where you just let it all go. You're welcome to take as many of those rounds of breath and movement as you'd like. Eventually, you'll find yourself to banana asana over to the right side. So you can start with your feet and just walk your feet to the bottom right corner of your mat with your hips anchored in the center. And then hands and maybe even shoulders slide or walk over to the top right corner. So you're creating this banana or crescent moon shape of your body. And then just take a moment to decide where you want to land. So you can cross either ankle over the other. It's going to give you different sensations. So left over right will be a bit more intense and right over left maybe a bit more grounding. Arms can connect at the hands or wrists. If you have really tight shoulders, your elbows might want to lift away from the earth in this pose. You can always just nuzzle a pillow underneath in that gap. You can even take the arms to a cactus or down by your side. So lots and lots of options. Gaze is just going to fall wherever is comfortable. So that might be over to the right, or you might keep your gaze up towards the ceiling. So now since the intention is to come undone, make sure that you're not sabotaging yourself by bringing in so much sensation It'll almost be impossible to soften into. So just start with a little bit of tension, knowing you can always go into more depth with each breath. But it's almost like inviting yourself into that depth rather than pushing yourself somewhere and then trying to clean up after it. Okay, that you gotta stay present with the depth present with the unraveling that's happening. So throughout these poses, you can pay attention to where in your body you feel resistance, or you notice you're trying to control within your body. And then I encourage you to just simply let that go, just as you did with the exhale breaths. Just soften, release the effort, and just allow yourself to simply be. If you ever find yourself struggling to let go, ease out of the physical body. So just take less sensation and then see how the, how the undoing 
happens. So what's going to be really important in tonight's practice is not necessarily the pose itself, but the aftermath. Okay? So that feeling of when we release and we just allow ourselves to come back to neutrality, where we start to soften away from where we've been and we just simply lend and breathe and unwind. So really take your time with this transition back through center. You can start to move your hands and shoulders into the middle of your mat and then walk your feet in as well. Bend your knees and plant your feet and then just allow your low back to press down towards the ground. Knees might even drop in. You're welcome to take feet wider. But we're just gonna pause here. Notice sensation just dissipating from the left side body. Maybe from any areas that were tense or being lengthened. Do you notice how your whole body just starts to sink in? If your knees are knock knee towards one another, just gently release them and heel toe your feet hip width distance apart. Okay. You can grab a couple of pillows or if you have a bolster, and just place it in between your knees. So this is optional for a twist. If you don't want to use props for this, that's totally okay too. So take your arms out wide, T-shape or cactus shape, and just gently either pick up or slide your hips over to the right. And then allow your knees to drop over to the left. Just making sure you've moved anything that might be over to the left side of your mat. The reason I like to add in the props between the legs is to keep the alignment of the hips all the way down to the ankles. If that works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Remember that you are the most knowledgeable person of your body. The twist brings in this slight compression of the core. And so what we'll really focus on is trying to soften maybe into some of the discomfort that shows up. And just allowing ourselves to release the control of the twist and just rest our bodies heavier and heavier. Now with that also being said as a reminder, you don't have to stay anywhere that isn't serving you. that this practice is based on functionality, so just choose what feels right for you. Whatever depth or variation or even pose if you need.
You might notice some resistance that comes up to this unraveling of self. And notice if you're even trying to control that resistance. So control has a lot of different layers. And sometimes we don't even recognize what we're doing. And so one of my favorite tools for easing out of this urgency to kind of be in the knowing or um, be secure, be certain, is to just simply focus on breath. So to not worry what's happening around or even within and just simply give all of your attention to the breath. What it sounds like, what it feels like, the space that your breath occupies. You just simply redirect your attention to the breath and then let your breath carry you. Gently start to unwind back through center, even slower than you'd like. You can shift your hips into the middle of your mat and release any props that you have between your thighs. And just come back to a mini Shavasana. Extending your legs straight, arms down by your sides. And in doing nothing, you're actually creating space to receive. And to receive the peacefulness after the unwinding or the moment of pause. Whenever you're ready, bend back into your knees and then just roll yourself over to your left hand side. You can hug your knees in close to your chest, which is gonna lengthen out your low back. And the head will rest heavy into your left bicep or upper arm. Use your right hand to press yourself up to a tabletop. And then this is where we will be in more of that yang energy of movement, okay, but it's not necessarily controlled. Okay, so you might start off with some controlled movement like cat cows, but then I just want you to explore okay, almost See if you can turn off your thinking brain and let your body guide you. So it might look a little bit different than everybody else's movement or even movement that you've taken previously. Just start to move into those areas that are resistant and tight. Movement is almost a natural medicine to the resistance. It starts to heal those places that are stuck. So you can stay here as long as you need in movement. Whenever you're ready, you'll start to move to melting heart. So hips will stay on top of your knees and you just start to walk your hands out in front of you until your forearms connect to the mat and forehead can root down. Now, if this feels like too much for your shoulders, you can always slide 
a stack of pillows underneath your chest. And then just let your chin rest onto those pillows so that there's not as much body weight dropping towards the earth. I chose this particular pose today because heart openers like this one tend to be spaces that we resist. Right? So physiologically and based as well on evolution, to be open in this area can provoke a fear response because right? this is where all our vital organs are. So we want to keep this protected. And you'll notice in times of sadness or fear or worry that you actually do physically protect this space. You cross your arms, kind of hold your arms across your body. You shrink back. And so it is a bit of an uncomfortable space to be this wide open in the heart center. So in knowing that, can you give yourself permission that it's okay to feel a little uncomfortable, but that you also don't have to react? That you can just simply breathe and trust your body to guide you. We're only gonna be here for about another minute or so Really finding that unwinding, letting go of those previous reactions or habits to just run or move out of what's uncomfortable and to start creating new habits that you can be safe in the uncertainty. That all of that control that often equates to our safety doesn't actually have to be there. Notice the tension that you're still maybe harboring within. And watch its transition as we move out of this pose. And slowly walking your hands back towards your knees. Take your hips onto your heels and then slide your hands backwards for child's pose. So belly rests onto your thighs, forehead to the earth, and palms face up. Additionally, if you want more support in child's pose, you can always take that bolster or pillows, either sit back onto the support or drape it underneath your chest, almost like you're just hugging the props beneath you. This shape is meant to be full relaxation. So as much as you can, just add support that all of the tension or lengthening you felt in melting heart is now fading away. And just tune in to what does that feel like in your physical body? I always think of it as like a full body sigh where you just melt in. It's almost like you come home to yourself.
gently walk your hands forward. And then lift your hips away from your heels so that you can tuck your toes under. Plant your palms beside your knees and we're gonna come up into dangling pose. So you'll lift up your hips, but keep a really deep bend into your knees. And then if you need, just heel toe your feet wide. So hip width or even wider. With dangling pose, you can just allow your hands to drape. Or if you want somewhere for them to land, you can always take your blocks or pillows for your forearms or your hands to land on. Dangling pose is a beautiful combination of effort and ease. So you wanna make sure you have a really deep bend into the knees. That's gonna support your low back because the intention of this pose isn't to lengthen the backs of the legs. It's the decompression of your spine. So as you let the crown of your head drop heavier to the earth, you're creating space in between each and every one of your vertebra. Now be mindful if you do start to get a little bit dizzy with head below heart, you can always come back down the same way you came in to child's pose. So there's a lot of effort in the legs to hold you here, but then there's complete relaxation in the upper body. You might even notice these tiny, tiny sways forward and back and side to side that you're not even controlling, they're just happening naturally. I think this pose speaks so much to how do we let go of control? How do we come undone? And it comes from a place of foundation and support. So in order to allow the upper body to fully release, we have to be really strong through the legs. And so when we're coming undone, it's not a full body meltdown. It's a place where we just allow ourselves to loosen and we start to soften maybe rigid expectations. So there's still a foundation in who we are, but it's almost like we're softening those rough edges, starting to allow tight grips to release. So last couple of breaths, see if you can really find that unwinding or Letting go, apahigraha. So if you do have your hands interlaced or hooked on the other elbow, you'll just release hands to your mat. Walk your hands about a foot forward and then just take your knees to your mat. Untuck your toes and take your feet out in front of you. You can just stay upright for a moment, shoulders over your hips. You might notice a whole lot of sensation moving through your body. But notice how you don't have to control any of this. You just get to be an observer. Soften your shoulders. Relax through your hips. Take a big breath in and a long sustained exhale out. So 
All right, Yogi's choice for these next couple of poses. I'm going to teach deer, but if you prefer figure four on your back, thread the needle or pigeon, you're welcome to take any of those. So from this place, you're gonna scoop your feet over to the right. So you're sitting on your left hip. And take your top knee and start to draw it back and off to the side so that your legs almost create two 90 degree angles or a pinwheel shape. If your knees are a little bit more bent or less bent, don't worry. You'll find a place that feels right for you and it won't necessarily look the same for me. Take your weight into your front hip and then just start to lean forward and explore some movement. So this is where we're letting go of that control of how this has to look and just where do you need it to be? So you might fold more towards your ankle or over top of your knee or even over top of your thigh and more of a twist. Sometimes I like to just sit upright and work into that internal rotation of that back hip. So you have lots and lots of options even laying back to work into the quadriceps of your right thigh. So there's no rush to choose where you've landed and you also have agency to change. But just check in once you have settled into a shape that there's room for you to let go. So there's that beautiful balance between discomfort and surrender. Where you can lean into the discomfort and simply be. Even though you surrendered earlier in this pose, you might notice new places that you can offer yourself softness or permission to release. It's this ongoing journey of continual unwinding. Sometimes a thought pops up into our head and our body reacts by tightening and constricting and it happens that fast. And so when we're present, we just start to notice that we've added intention and now we can just let it go. And last little bit on this side, see if you can step back into that release. Wherever you are, just start to bring yourself back up, shoulders over hips. 
And what's cool about this pose is the opposite side is actually the rebound. So you'll just scoop your back knee around and in front, shift over onto your right hip and then left knee will start to draw back. So that front leg that was just an external rotation is now going into the internal. So it's the complete opposite of where you just were. Take your time to explore on this side. There's no rush. You'll eventually land yourself where you're comfortable enough to stay, whether that's forward or off to the side or backwards. And you can always come back to that full body scan, just unwinding one muscle group at a time, wherever you discover you're holding on to tension. Can you see the stillness in this pose as an invitation into wider truths? To enter what is real, you have to first meet what you are resisting, what you're resisting letting go of. It's both tender and complicated as remembering to breathe. Simply remembering to breathe. You can bend the inhale and the exhale. And then just let it fill the shape of any wound, any resistance. And maybe you even begin to look closely at how light weaves its way through everything. Even the resistance, the darkness, the fear, light always finds a way. Take five more breaths in this shape.
and use the next few breaths to slowly bring yourself back up. You can scoop up your left back knee and then just extend your legs out in front of you. Once again, coming into this neutral seat. Your feet can be together or apart, really doesn't matter. Feeling the shifts that are happening beneath the surface of your skin. And then when you're ready, you can start to bring yourself over to your right side for fetal position. So that head rests into your right bicep. And then you'll slowly roll onto your back. We're coming full circle to where we started. So you can start by just taking a nice big stretch of the body, reaching arms overhead, maybe even pointing into your toes, reminding yourself what that effort feels like, and then just simply dropping it all as you exhale. Move any props that are over to the left as this is where we're headed for banana asana. You can start to walk your feet towards the bottom left corner of your mat, and then hands and shoulders to follow. This is one of my favorite ways to sequence in a circle because it's a reminder that we're going to come into these cycles of life where there's going to be ups and downs and different seasons. And that where we started when we first landed on our mat today, we're gonna end in that same place, but it's gonna be completely different because of all the different moments that you've experienced over our time together. So even when it feels like we're falling into these patterns where we feel like we should have known better, that we just needed to try harder, that sometimes we actually just need to surrender and trust the cycle that life's going to bring us back up to where we started, but it's going to look new and different. And then we're going to keep going in that cycle. And the yogis refer to these cycles as our karmic contracts. That each new cycle is ours to break. Where we just learn a little bit more about ourselves. Maybe we shift something in that cycle, no matter how small. And then we do it all over again. Maybe the lessons get deeper or harder. Maybe they get easier. But instead of fighting these timelines or wherever we're at, we just simply learn to trust them and embrace that this is where I am and I'm just going to breathe through it.
gently begin to walk your shoulders and fingers back through center and take your heels, your feet with you as well. You can bend into your knees, walk your feet wide and you just place the soles of your feet on your mat. Belly, belly, button, pressing down towards the earth, bringing yourself back to a neutral spine. There's no rush to move towards your final pose of your twist. If you used props on the other side, you'll place props between your knees, maybe even your ankles. And just make sure that you shift your hips over to the left so that there's space for your knees to land all the way over to the right. The deeper that you bend into your hips or the higher your knees come up, you'll probably feel more sensation. So you can always play with not curling in as tight or just adding extra support. Allowing yourself to come undone. Maybe what does that look like for you today? To just simply let go of your physical body. Let go of thoughts you've been holding on to, resentment, frustration. We let go of some lingering feelings that don't really serve you anymore. The moment has passed, but we've gripped the feelings and maybe just letting that go as well. Welcome to take as much time as you need to shift in this transition. Just bring your knees all the way back up through center. If you need a little bit longer, of course, you're welcome to stay for a couple extra breaths. 
And just coming all the way back to neutral spine for Shavasana. And if you feel inclined to add in any movement, um, hug your knees to your chest or happy baby, of course, you can always wash knees left and right, but eventually coming to where we started our practice. But oh, so different. I wanted to close off with this poem that's recently become one of my favorites by Danielle Doby. And just let the words wash over you. You don't have to do anything with them or hold them or remember them. I can always give it to you later, but just allow yourself to be free in this moment. So what would it feel like to come undone? To not fasten down, but let yourself flood. To not close, but open yourself to experience it all. What would it feel like to come undone? To move past your edge instead of run. To lose your fear and meet the quiet depths within. What would it feel like to come undone? To release the weight and find your freedom. The cleansing has come to bring you back home to you. I will leave you here for as long as you need in Shavasana. And if you, and when you are ready to come out, you're welcome to join in this final journal prompt. Um, but if you do have to go, that's also okay too. So I'll type it in the chat for those of you doing this live, just in case you need that extra reminder and you can just do it on your own time. And for those of you doing this as a pre-recorded, the journal prompt is, what would it feel like to come undone? To let go of whatever you're trying to control. How could that serve you to come undone? Thank you for joining me and truly from the bottom of my heart, namaste.